Good morning, YouTube. How are you guys doing today? It is me again, your favorite Texas trucker. And I am cruising through Missouri. Uh, I'm on uh, State Highway 36, headed east, going into uh, Illinois, and then I'll run all the way through Illinois and Indiana. Uh, I'll be stopping at a TA off 65 about 12 miles south of where I'm delivering to in the morning. Uh, things have been going fairly well. Uh, you know, there's always going to be something going on. Uh, I've got a, a belt squeal. And I don't know if there's a belt that may be too tight. The air compressor clutch is going out. Or if it's a tensioner pulley, it could be any of the three. Um, recently, I had thrown the belt on the uh, air compressor. And uh, I had to get a new air compressor, uh, air conditioning compressor belt uh, put on. And um, I think he may have tightened it a little too tight, so that's possibly the problem. But it also might be the tensioner pulley. I know when it squeals that the uh, pulley on the air conditioning compressor is stopping. So, um, I don't know. I'm hoping it's not the air conditioner compressor. I'm hoping it's tensioner pulley. It's the cheaper fix. Uh, either way it goes, I'm going to have to have it looked at pretty soon. I'm trying to, hoping it'll last out for the rest of this um, this time out, and I'll get it fixed when I get home. Uh, if not, then I'll be fixing it here, and, you know, whatever. But um, loads have been fairly good. Um, I delivered a load on Tuesday morning. Uh, that was my home time load, the load that got me home. The customer couldn't take the load. Um, they didn't have any room for it. So uh, they set the appointment for Tesday after I picked it up. And, you know, wasn't much I could do about it. So, you know, I, I was taking me home anyway, so I really didn't care. You know, and, uh, but it did keep me home an extra day. I was actually planning on leaving on Monday, but I didn't leave until Tuesday. But uh, anyway, it paid. Like eleven hundred twenty-five dollars, I think, and then I picked up a uh, three hundred five-mile load with two drops going to uh, Oklahoma City and Woodward, Oklahoma, and uh, that one paid uh, eight hundred dollars. And then uh, picked up a load eleven miles from Woodward, uh, where I delivered at, and uh, that was this load that I'm on right now. It's going up to uh, Indiana. Red Cellular, Indiana, I think is how it's pronounced. Anyway, it's going there, and that load pays $1,500. $1,450, I think. It was $1,450 or $1,500, I don't know. Um, anyway, you know, it's uh, about an 800, 850-mile trip, somewhere right around there, I think. So, uh, you know, it's not a bad pay on that one. Anyway, uh, as long as I don't have any complications, uh, getting out from underneath this load here. Then uh, my next load uh, picks up in Indiana and delivers to uh, South Carolina and Charleston. That's another $1,500 load. But that'll be on uh, next pay period. Uh, this pay period closes out on Sunday and that load doesn't deliver until Monday. So uh, all in all, things are going fairly good. Uh, I did have a a brake chamber uh, ripped apart, ripped out of the, the top bracket, and left a big gaping hole on the top of it. I had to get that replaced uh, while I was on the road, and uh, I probably should have done it myself. But I don't really know how to adjust brakes. It's one of the things I need to learn. So uh, I went in and let the mechanic do it, and they gouged the shit out of me on the price. Uh, the brake chamber itself probably runs about 50 bucks. They charged me 137 for it. They got your ass over a barrel out here. You know what do you do? So, um, I'm thinking about buying a brake chamber and just sticking it in the box. That way I've got it next time something like that happens. And I don't have to pay, you know, almost three times what the parts worth. But, you know, anyway. Um, that's the update. You know, that's what's been going on. And, um. Anyway, I had something that I wanted to, uh, well, I got one more little bit of update. Um, I told y'all a while back that I would I would tell you what was going on uh, with my dispatcher. And, and uh, so I wanted to go ahead and, and uh, you know, take care of that also. Um, I had a dispatcher at Triple C, and uh, she was doing pretty
pretty good about keeping me running, getting me loads, you know, and um, and uh, she was doing me right, but uh, you know, she's got a lot of uh, things going on in her life, you know, and, and she's having to put a lot of attention towards that. And she had a real full load of drivers, and um, the loads, you know, they were just weren't falling very well, and you know, things just weren't weren't really um, going very good. I was getting really good rates, you know, my rates were. We're running 205, 218, 244, 268. Uh, one was, you know, three dollars and five cents. You know, but they were all really short loads, and um, I was losing a lot of time messing with those loads. You know, and, and uh, you know, I, I told her I needed to make more money, but you know, she was um, she was taking off a little bit to deal with her, her you know, things going on in the end. Um, life and uh, I didn't know all that at the time you know, I just you know I knew that, that uh, she had some things going on but um, you know I didn't know that she was really overloaded anyway I talked to Matt and I told Matt I said you know uh, is there anything that we could do uh, you know to fix the loads you know and, and keep in mind I was not complaining about my dispatcher I really liked my dispatcher she was a great gal fun to work with easy to work with you know, and easy to get along with, and, um, you know, I just really enjoyed working with her, but I needed to make more money, you know, I'm saying, I mean, my last paycheck, when I was on her board, was only $876, that ain't, that ain't I just can't do it, you know, I can't, I can't do it, so I told Matt, I said, now pull my numbers, look at what I've been doing, let me know what we can do to make things a little bit better, uh, do things a little bit different. And, uh, so he went and pulled my numbers and looked at them, and he decided that based on my, you know what they know that I like to run, how I like to run, uh, they decided to switch me with a different dispatcher that, that, that uh, you know, one that pushes her drivers really hard. And uh, so they put me with Chandra, and uh, Chandra's been running me pretty hard. You know, I mean, it's, I, I enjoy it. I like it. That's how I like to run out here. Short loads are okay, but I'm not built to be a region regional guy, you know, it's just, it's not my thing, um, if I can run them and get off of them fast, you know, and, and uh, get into another load, you know, then I'm alright with running, you know, the regional stuff, you know, but the, the amount of time I was taking to get loaded and unloaded, you know, and then only running one of these loads a day, rates were great, but the miles sucked, you know, and um, I just, you know, I couldn't do it. Every dispatcher is different, you know, they're all, they all do things their own, you know, a different way. Each one's got a way they they like to run their drivers and, and um, you know, it, as, as awesome of a person as, as my other dispatcher was, and as much as I really enjoyed working with her and, and as much as we really got along, you know, they, I just can't run that way, you know, I mean, it's just not the way I, I'm built to run. I'm built to run the way I'm running right now, you know, this is the way I like to run. So they switched me to Chandra. Uh, it was their idea, not my idea. Like I said, I wasn't complaining about my dispatcher. I was, uh, I was just wanting them to come up with something that we could do different, uh, where you know I could run a little bit harder, make a little bit more money. And their idea was to switch me to Chandra because that's how Chandra runs her drivers. So I'm out here now with Chandra. I've been with her for you know, a couple weeks now, uh, two three weeks. And, uh, and, and she's been running me pretty hard. I really, I really enjoyed uh, the change, you know. And um, you know, things are things are looking up. You know, you all know I did a lot of repair work to this truck, so it put me in the hole pretty quick. I've been trying to dig out of that hole. You know, I'm breaking even uh, pretty much. Uh, once I get uh, this next paycheck. Uh, then uh, everything will be leveling out, and I'll be I'll, I'll be at, at, you know pretty much at a breaking point where I paid off all of my repair work. Uh, everything is taken care of there, and uh, and I'll be back to where you know I'm not I'm not paying that debt anymore. And uh, you know I do definitely appreciate Triple C because they were there when I needed them. You know they um, they covered the cost of a lot of those repairs. I took it out of my settlements. And if it hadn't been for them, I would have failed a long time ago. Uh, 
Uh, which does bring me to another point, and this is something that uh, there's a couple of friends of mine that, that were looking to come into Triple C, and this is an important bit of information for them, and that is that uh, up until recently, uh, we've been getting paid every other week, right? and, and that's been a reason why a couple of friends of mine have decided they didn't want to come here to Triple C because they can't wait two weeks uh, to get their settlement. And uh, anyway, that we just they just sent out the message this last week, and that is that we are going to uh, weekly paychecks, uh, provided everything gets scanned in on time, and you know, and they get all this stuff. Now, uh, I'm not sure how that's going to affect this paycheck because uh, on the two-week schedule, this paycheck ends on this coming Sunday. Today is uh, Thursday. Uh, if they started already, if we're already on a single week, then I should get a paycheck tomorrow for last week. You know, and then I should get it on Friday for this week. If not, then on Friday I won't get anything this week. And on Friday I'll get the paycheck for both these weeks. I don't know yet exactly how that's going to work. I guess I'll find out by the end of the day. But from here on out... Uh, we are going to be on a, a weekly pay schedule, and uh, you know, and so those guys that have been holding back uh, because of the pay the pay period, uh, and it's time to go ahead and come on over. Make sure you let them know I sent you, and uh, go ahead and get started. We got trailers to spare. Uh, we just uh, they just let go two drivers in Florida because they can't get them out of Florida. These two guys live in Florida. We don't have hardly anything in Florida is a bitch to get out of anyway. Uh, Florida, uh, you know, when I was with Millis, I never got a load out of Florida. I always ended up dead at 300 and something miles back to Alton, Georgia. So, you know, I mean, freight in Florida really sucks, unless you're in Reaper, you know. Uh, so we had, they had to let two drivers go in Florida because they couldn't get the, the freight to get them out of there. And uh, they let one driver go because he was getting too many tickets. So, um, yeah, well, they've got some trailers that are open. I know that they've got three or four trailers that have never been issued out. They've got those three trailers for the, the three drivers that they let go. Um, you know, so we've definitely got, you know, room. I've got one friend that is signing on um, Monday. Well, he's already kind of signed on. He's done his paperwork. And he picks up his truck Monday, so we're bringing his truck down there and get all that, you know, groovy stuff done by then, and, uh, and he'll be signed on, and then we've got, I've got another friend of mine that I don't know what the hell he's going to do, he, you know, he says he's going to sign on, he's got a truck, he bought a truck, he's been in the shop for the last few weeks getting some stuff or, or fixed on it, he doesn't have it signed on anywhere, he quit his last job, he doesn't have uh, any place to work yet, uh, he isn't signed on anywhere yet, you know, and I don't know, he's, I don't know what he's Hopefully he signs on here so he can do good and I can help him out and you know, keep him going. Uh, so anyway, that's the end of the update. Uh, you know, if y'all want to come to Triple C, uh, and by all means hit me up. I'll give you any information that you need and uh, you know, I'll tell you who to contact down there and just let them know that I sent you. Um, when you fill out your application, there's going to be a deal on there where how we can refer to Triple C, tell them, I'll tell them my name. See if we can get you signed on. Now, uh, to a, another topic, I guess, kind of related. I have uh, some friends of mine uh, that are getting into the uh, truck driving uh, owner operator side. Uh, they've been company drivers, you know, some of them for a long time, some of them for a short time. But, um, you know, they've decided that it's time for them to make the jump to become a, an owner operator. And uh, one of these guys asked uh, recently, uh, he hasn't bought his truck yet, he's looking at buying a truck. And, um, you know, he's, he's got some experience underneath of him. So he asked me, you know, recently, he said, you know, should I uh, get my own authority or should I lease on to somebody else? Boy, ain't that the question of the year, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Here's my opinion on it, and, and man, this is just an opinion. Uh, you 
y'all know or you should know if you've been watching my videos that I have a goal. My goal is to own a lot of trucks. Uh, you know, I, I plan to, to have a small fleet of trucks by the time my life's over with that I can leave for my kids. And uh, I've got one that's wanting to come into the trucking industry. I've got, you know, one that's a paramedic and he, you know, may or may not get his CDL and, and drive on the side. Uh, I don't know what they're going to do yet. I know that one of them wants to be a truck driver and, and he's all gung ho about, you know, getting out here and learning all this stuff. So, uh, uh, I want to own a fleet of trucks. So, eventually, somewhere down the line, I'm probably going to have to get my own authority just, just to be able to, uh, you know, make that little bit extra bit of profit that I need. But right now, with one truck, one operation, one truck operation, or in my opinion, even two or three or four uh, trucks, you know, uh, you're best off with uh, leasing onto another company. And here's why. Um, there's a learning curve in the trucking industry. Right? And there's a lot of things that you've got to know, a lot of things you've got to stay on top of. You know, and uh, you go into Triple C, and Triple C is a relatively small company. I mean, they don't have uh, a lot of their own trucks. They've got maybe four or five trucks that belong to Triple C that they put, um, they put um, drivers in. But they've also got, um, you know, 40, 50, I think they said 57 or 58. Uh, is where they're at right now and, and, and total trucks you know and so most of the trucks that they've got are leased on to them but even even with the trucks that, that are there and, and the way their operation runs they've got probably 15 20 employees you know that they have to maintain in order to cover everything that you have to do there's just so much stuff involved with, with owning these trucks and and managing these trucks, you know, and, and as a single truck operation, you know, there's some of that stuff you don't have to deal with, but there's still a lot that you got to deal with. And being a driver is a full-time job, you know, I mean, it's a full-time job just on itself. And honestly, I don't have the time or the inclination to deal with the things that I would have to deal with if I had my own authority right now. Uh, I've gotten into an awesome company, a really, really, really good company, and, uh, man, you know, they've got my back, and I know they've got my back, you know, and they're, they're just an awesome group of guys and gals that work down there, and, uh, you know, I'm operating under their authority, they handle all the headache, they handle all the problems, they handle the, the IFTA, and, uh, you know, tracking all my mileage through uh, all these states that I run through, they, they handle... Uh, you know, the dispatching, they find the loads, they, you know, they've uh, got the brokers that, you know, are, are looking for direct contacts, direct shipper contacts, uh, you know, they handle the safety, they handle the drug testing, they handle the audits from uh, both the IRS and from uh, uh, DOT, you know, they handle uh, the payroll, they handle, you know, everything, they handle all that stuff, you know, and, and I don't have to handle all of them. I don't have to manage the, the, the things that they have to manage. And uh, I, I honestly think that, you know, if you're going to get out here and get into your own truck and, and you have not owned your own truck for a while, you know, if you've owned a truck for a year or so, you know, and, and you've been out here for a year or so and you've got that much experience as an owner-operator and you're looking to put a second truck on, you're thinking, you know, maybe I should go out and get my own authority. Well, that's all completely different issue because you've been out here for a year and a half or so, a year or so, whatever the case may be, five years, ten years. You've been out here as an owner-operator. You've dealt with uh, brokers. You've dealt with uh, the shippers. And the only thing that you haven't really dealt with is the paperwork. So learning the paperwork is a little bit easier. But coming out here as a fresh owner-operator, you're, you're in your first truck. Uh, coming out from being a company driver, and uh, you don't know, I mean, it's a whole different world out here as an owner-operator than it is as a company driver. It's completely different. There's so many things that you got to pay attention to, so many things that you've got to be aware of that as a company driver, you take for granted, you know, and, uh, and so my advice is to find a good, solid company uh, to lease on to 
at least for the first couple of years that you're out here as an owner operator. And then if, if in those first couple of years that you're out here, you think, I still want to get my own authority. You know, I want to, I want to have my own authority. I want to have complete control of my own business. Well, then by all means, at that point, go out and get it. But don't come out here, you know, fresh out of, out of a um, company position, you know, buying your first truck for the first time and, um, you know, and come out here and, and um, jump right in head first, you know, uh, trying to get your own authority because, you know, it may be for some people and I, and I happen to know, uh, uh, you know, one or two people that did that and they've been successful. But then for the most part, you know, don't just come out here and do that. You know, get out here, buy your truck, lease it on to somebody, um, spend a year or so, um, you know, experiencing being an owner operator without all that headache. And then, hey, after a year or so, if you want to take on that headache, then by all means, you know, jump right on in there, take on the headache. I plan on taking it on eventually. Uh, it's not going to be for a while. Um, I will probably won't even consider uh, making that move until I've got about five trucks. And uh, right now, you know, I like this company I'm with so much, and uh, and, and I find I think this company that I'm with is so good that every truck that I get is going to be leased on here. And that's another thing I would say is that regardless of where you end up going, lease all your trucks on in the same place. If, if you don't like the company enough to lease all of your trucks to it, then you shouldn't have any trucks leased to it. You know, that, that's just my opinion. So, anyway, that's where I'm at on all that. And, uh, you know, that's my opinion. That's my input uh, today. There's a lot uh, to stay on top of as an owner-operator. You know, being a driver out here on the road, just a company driver, is not, uh, is not easy. You know, there's, there's a lot of laws and a lot of regulations and a lot of things that you have to stay on top of. And we all know what it's like being out here trying to drive around all these four-wheelers who seem to be totally oblivious to the entire world around them. You know, it's not an easy job. You're away from home. You're away from family. You know, you're away from friends. You know, you sleep in a, you sleep in a little box, you know, all night long, uh, every night. If you've been watching my Facebook page, you know, you'll have seen a couple trucks I posted at a truck stop I went to yesterday that were burned to the ground, you know. And, uh, you know, and, and it's a sobering thought when you look at that, you know, because you don't know if that could, you know, you look at that and the first thing you think is, man, I hope, I hope they survived, you know, I hope they got out. But these trucks are kind of like motor owners, you know, they go up pretty quick once they catch on fire and there ain't too many ways out of them, you know. And, and uh, you know, you're out here and not easy, you know, your life's on the line, you know, pretty much the whole time you get out here, we've had drivers shot out here, we've had drivers stabbed out here, we've got drivers getting robbed out here, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's not an easy life, you know, uh, but then you add to that the fact that you own your own truck, you know, and, and uh, man, that's a whole, a whole different headache, you know, once you own your own truck, you know, you're responsible for the maintenance, you're responsible for the fuel, kind of really got to get into that route planning to find the cheapest places to fuel or the best places to fuel or uh, or you got to get into um, you know learning where the good mechanics are and where you buy the cheapest parts you know and, and uh, you know and try not to get reamed when you when you do have a breakdown you know and, and uh, you know I mean you, you got to get into uh, you know what kind of tires are you running what kind of rolling resistance do they have do you run low pro tires or do you run tall tires i mean these are all things that that you really got to look into you know and, and you're doing anything that you can do just to get an extra half a mile per gallon you know out of your truck you know and, and uh, as an owner operator i mean as a company driver you don't give a shit about any of that you know what i'm saying you don't care what fucking tires they put on the truck Put whatever tires the company wants to put on the truck. You know, ain't paying for it. Who gets down? You don't really care what the cost of fuel is when you're driving. You ain't paying the damn fuel bill. You just run the card through the slot, punch in all the numbers, fill that son of a bitch up until it can't take no more. You know. And, uh, these are all good things that you got to take care of. You know. And then out here, you know, on top of all that, when you become an owner operator, it's about your rates. You know. And, and, and you got to try to figure out is it worth taking this deadhead to go pick up this load, you know, because it's going to lower my rate per mile when I include my deadhead miles in. And how heavy is the load? What terrain is the 
is the load driving through. You know, I mean, carrying a 44,000 pound load through Kansas is completely different than carrying a 44,000 pound load through Virginia. You know, and so you know, these are all things that you got to think about as an owner operator. As a company driver, you don't give a shit. You know, you get paid by the mile. It doesn't matter what you carry. Because what you carry doesn't, you know, it, it, it affects the truck. But you don't have to pay for the maintenance on the truck, so you don't give a shit. But you know, you go to add to that. You add to all that the headache of the taxes and the paperwork and the if and, and you know and, and uh, dealing with the IRS and dealing with DOT and getting DOT audits you know and, and putting together a safety program and putting together a uh, you know a drug program a drug testing program you know and even a one truck operation has got to have it you know and, and you know you're looking into your insurance and your insurance is so freaking expensive when you're a one truck operation starting out, you know, and, and, you know, it cost about five, six thousand dollars just to get, um, you know, just to get your own authority, just to start, you know, and, and uh, yeah, now, I'll, I'll stick with Triple C for now, you know, eventually somewhere, you know, uh, somewhere down the road, you know, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be getting my own authority, and I'll be dealing, I'll be taking all those headaches on, but that's going to be somewhere down the road. You know, that ain't happening right now. Right now I am very, very, very happy with where I'm at. And I'm very happy with the people that I work with. I'm very happy with the people that I work for. And, uh, you know, the Triple C's attitude is is, uh, is like this. He said it in the office the other day when I was in the business with him. Uh, Matt said, uh, he said, Triple C, we don't really consider y'all employees. You know, he said, we consider y'all partners in business so you know they're you're both making money their business model is set up for you to make as much money as possible they don't make money unless you make money and uh, you know they know your name and, and believe it or not that's pretty damn important so i'm very 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 happy where i'm at and my advice is to lease on you know somewhere where you can be as happy as i am right now and uh, worry about the authority later Alright, that's what I got to say on it. We're getting up on about 29 minutes on this video. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it off. If you like the video, share it. Uh, you know, tell your friends. Get people to watch and subscribe. I'm coming up on a thousand subscribers. Man, I love all y'all, man. And I really appreciate y'all being there with me. Some of you guys have been there from day one. You know, and I really appreciate all y'all. A thousand is kind of a a benchmark for me, you know, it's kind of a, a, land, a landmark, you know, a, a milestone, you know, if you will, and, and I, I'd like to reach it, I'd like to blow it out of the water and, and go way past it, you know, uh, you guys, uh, you know, are what makes this stuff happen, you, know, you guys are the reason that I, I do these videos, and uh, I appreciate each one of y'all, I just want y'all to know that, thank you for watching, uh, share, like, subscribe, get other folks to subscribe, and Pay, and pay attention to you. I know my videos are long and I know that a lot of people don't like long videos. I do appreciate those of y'all that stick with it. So, um, if you do come to Triple C, make good and sure you tell them that I sent you Stephen Neal, Truck 664. Tell them I sent you and, um, and we'll catch you here a little bit later. I'll upload this video tonight when I get parked. Y'all take care and peace out.